If you would please, please come in and get comfortable. We've got to get started. First of all, we'd like to thank you for coming to our session on creative choreography, and we'd like to introduce ourselves. I'm Jerry Sasser from Los Angeles. Next to me is Mike Seastrom from Northridge, California. Next to Mike is Andy Sissner from Elkridge, Maryland. And finally, down there on the end, from the foot dance capital of the world, Ken Bauer from Hemet, California. Uh, Ken is sitting in this afternoon, and he asked us to please tell you that he's sitting in as a last minute. Burl is up in the room, and he's not feeling too well, so he won't be joining us. And we are very pleased that Ken consented to sit in with us and offer his thoughts on creative choreography. For those of you that uh, don't know, this session, this session is being taped, and we ask that if you have a comment to make or if you have a question to ask, that you please not wait to be recognized by the chair, but please go to the floor microphone and ask your question or make your comment from the floor microphone. That is most important because unless you make it from that microphone, it, it doesn't go on to the tape. And the people that are getting these tapes would rather not have big, wide gaps in them. So please, if you have a question or a comment, and we encourage you to ask, or more important, we, en we encourage you to contribute with your comments, to please go immediately to the mic without being recognized, and we'll recognize you there when you get there. Just line up behind the mic. First of all, we'd like to open the session, and I'd like to open the session with making a few comments about setting the atmosphere for creative choreography. It is our hope here this afternoon, we know that a lot of us would like to come to a session like this and go home filled with a notebook full of very imaginative choreography and great new gimmicks with things that we've been working with to take home and wow your dancers with for the next year until Color Lab Convention rolls around again. And we may give you some of that, but that is not our primary purpose here this afternoon. We're going to try to find a way to stimulate you into thinking up your own choreography. It does no good. Well, it's, it's to your advantage, of course, to take things from other callers and learn to use them. But you are far better off if you can, if you can learn to stimulate your own imagination and go home and learn to create choreography. We have seats down here in the front. If you want to come on down, please do come on down. We have lots of seats. If we can stimulate you into a way of thinking of your own choreography, then you're so much better off rather than just taking what we give you here this afternoon. So with that thought in mind, try to, try to see where we're leading you. One of, the, uh, one of the things that I want to mention from the very beginning is if you're calling uh, my notes, and I don't know about the other guys, but my notes are designed primarily to be used with dancers that you contact all the time. In other words, your home club. Many of the times when you go out to do a festival or a large event to a bunch of strangers, you can't get too creative with your choreography. You have to be very selective. Some things you can get away with, but not nearly the amount of creative choreography that you get away with at your home clubs that you call to every week. By the same token, with the Thing, the kind of things that we anticipate giving you this afternoon, you can't expect to go home immediately and lay it on them. If you've been calling to this group week after week, and in and, and what is essentially the same type of dance week after week, if you now proceed to go home and call six tips full of very imaginative choreography, your people are going to hang you from the rafters Because they came there to dance. They came there to be entertained. They want... We, we came up with a phrase, dancers don't want challenge, they want variety at any level. I'm not talking about challenge as in C1 dancing. I'm talking about challenge which stops them and makes them think and where they run a high risk of losing when they make a decision. It's my firm belief that dancers do not want challenge, they want variety. And as one famous caller said many, many years ago, they want to win 95% of the time. So with that thought in mind, I think you have to realize that if we give you a lot of ammunition this afternoon here, 
You can't go home and present it in one fell swoop and expect the dancers to appreciate you and love you for it. Be cautious about going home and introducing anything new. A teaspoonful of a time, back off, let them dance for a while, judge them, see if they're ready, give them another teaspoon and back off again. It's, that's the most important thing as far as I'm concerned. If these guys have comments, they're going to jump in. I'm waiting for them to jump. Uh, it's, it's my own feeling that when we talk about creative choreography, that um, uh, a caller sets the tone of creative choreography many times with the kind of music that he uses. These are just general things I throw out at you. When you select your music, if you put on a hoedown, let's say, climb the rafters type hoedown and proceed to present a lot of creative choreography, it's probably going to go down the drain because that hoedown is up there yelling at them saying, let's dance, let's dance the stuff we know and get excited. And you're presenting intricate choreography to music that is saying it's time to relax and dance. So my first thought on creative choreography is choose your music carefully, perhaps a more subdued hoedown to make the people concentrate on your voice rather than the music getting them excited. Pick the proper time of evening for the creative choreography. It's a mistake to go in and start an evening with very imaginative choreography. The dancers are coming in cold, you're cold, you may have strangers in the crowd. It only, it's only obvious to warm the dancers up first and dance them with what they know. Then start inserting your creative choreography again a teaspoon at a time. Many times traveling callers uh, get people through choreography that they could not otherwise do by the selection of picture words, what I call picture words. And I'm on a constant lookout for these. If you as a caller go to a dancer, uh, go to another dance, I think it behooves you to listen to that caller and listen for his picture words. Many times uh, if you're dancing at a festival somewhere to another caller, and he gets you through a fantastic sequence, I'm sure you've all had the feeling, wow, I can't believe he got the floor through that. I'm out there listening to those magic words that got the floor to do something that they probably wouldn't have otherwise done. Uh, I'll have some examples later on, but, but uh, one that pops to mind very frequently for me, uh, I, I have a little thing now with cast off from ocean waves that I've been working recently. And uh, I always tell them who's going to hook in the middle of the ocean wave. It's, it's my own feeling that dances these days are weak on cast off from ocean waves. And I set them up very carefully to, so that I know where they're going to wind up in advance, and I tell them so they can't possibly miss. For instance, if I'd have the head square through and set to an ocean wave and cast off three quarters, probably a lot of the floor would go down the drain. However, if I have the head square through and touch the quarter, and do something to break up the flow, and now cast off three quarters, I know that before the cast off, those people that are facing out are going to wind up in the center of the wave. If it's the boys, I'll, if the boys are facing out before the cast off, I'll say, cast off three quarters, boys grab a left hand and trade. And I say that before they ever get there, so I don't allow them even the slightest chance of missing. Those are the things that I call picture words, or things that a caller should be aware of, so that he can get... 99% of the floor is through without anybody even having to think about it. Be aware of those things. Sometimes a simple thing like freeze or don't move. Um, I use a lot of holes and, and uh, I've stolen some picture words from the other guys. I've made some of my own. When I have lines of floor facing out, I'll say boys fold to face their nose or girls fold in front of his tummy or something like that. You get a laugh but you also get them to do exactly what they're And there's always some joker that won't quite do the fold. They'll fold 90 degrees, or they won't completely fold over. But they know where her nose is, or where her eyes are. And if you tell them to look her right in the eye, they can't possibly miss. So that, to me, is a picture word. I'm constantly looking for that kind of thing. With any creative choreography, the name of the game, especially if you're de dealing with dancers who are inexperienced at this sort of thing, is to get in, do it, and get out just as fast as you can. You don't want to destroy the whole purpose of the sequence by adding on a whole lot of extraneous choreography. 
I, I've seen guys get through, get dancers through some good sequences, introducing them to creative choreography, unusual positions that they were not into, and they get them out and they get them into a nice eight chain through setup or a nice facing line, and, and they must be thinking to themselves, well, I got them that far, I'm going to push my luck a little further. Instead of going for the left alaman, they push them one step further. And if they even drop one square, they've defeated their original purpose. Their original purpose in that sequence of calls was to get them to that tiny little piece of creative choreography. And all the other jumps that followed just defeated that original purpose when he had 100%. So the name of the game on creative choreography is get in, do it, and get out just as fast as you can so that the dancers are successful. After they're successful for a while, you can start stretching your sequences or you can start building on your sequences and making more complicated. But don't ever destroy your initial purpose by just pressing it a little bit for what I call pressing your luck. The name of the game is for the caller to prepare. It's a mistake to get up on the microphone on the night of the dance and start doing creative choreography. It just doesn't work. You've got to think about it at home. If you take even 30 minutes before a dance and push the checkers around and say, what am I going to do tonight for something unusual? My favorite trick is to say, what does every take a basic, what does everybody else do, and what else can I do with it instead of that? Cross that off my list, and what else can I do that's flowing, that the dancers can be expected to know? But I can't decide that at the dance with a microphone in my hand. I have to decide that at home. So even 30 minutes of preparation at home will pay off in the long run. The, uh, I'm, I'm going to stop for a minute and ask the other guys if they have anything to add. Because I've said quite a lot on, on what I consider attitude and just preparation for creative choreography. We haven't really said anything about the choreography themselves, itself. First of all, we'd like to say that, uh, uh, Ed, what Jerry said, I'm filling in for Burl Maine. Burl has the flu or something. He's really down right now. And uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel when they ask me to come up and create his choreography because uh, I guess about the only thing I can, I can add to it is you can still be a square dance caller and not be creative. <laughs> I, I'm still around, I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, creative choreography, uh, you know, if you're, if you're asked... Uh, I, it kind of forces a caller. I've never done a lot of my own work. I, I do cool with the checkers and uh, uh, I try to plan things ahead of time and maybe it's been creative. I don't know. Uh, not a lot of originality, but I'm finding more when I'm asked to do a mainstream dance, mainstream and quarterly selections, that uh, I can still use some of the plus one and plus two moves and uh, not be calling a plus one and plus two uh, dance. For instance, if I was calling a dance tonight, I can use diamond circulate without saying diamond circulate and still pretty well dance the dancers through the patterns by having, for instance, uh, uh, couple facing uh, right and left through there to the left girl's hand. Now we're in diamonds. Now we don't need to do a diamond circulate. Now you can do other things. You've got the same formation, but you have the girls in a wave. Then the girls fade, all the girls swing through, boys face in, and uh, boys step through, make a wave with the girls, what have you. Uh, is this creative? I don't know. But this is the type of things that, that I use. And other thing is triple trade. You call a lot of triple trade and never say, never say triple trade. You can work in and out by using couples hints from the same two phase line. Couples hints, center boys trade, all the girls trade. Or uh, a swing through spinner top, center boys trade, all the girls trade, what have you. Uh, turn and left through, very easy to call without saying turn and left through. Uh, what some others? Uh, uh, all eight spin the top. You can do that in range and never say spin the top. The whole floor can dance it. Going down the line, uh, curly cross. You can use a lot of curly cross. Dixie Grand. You can call a Dixie Grand and never say Dixie Grand. You can go into any level and find different, different, I guess, you, basics to work with. Uh, going into the C level. You can, you can do with mainstream dancers, you can work three in one line and never say wheel and cycle or cycle and wheel. And they still will dance if you just kind of, Set him ahead of time and, uh, and see how, but you should know it. I don't think you should go out and say, now I'm going to use all these things uh, tonight at the dance and just call them off the top of my head. I think you should know it. 
and you should work it at home with your own group before you go out into a strange group and try using a bunch of new things. Uh, Gary also mentioned that a traveling caller coming through can get the crowd to do a lot of things. Uh, and it looks very impressive. And I've done a little traveling before, and, and I've been really impressed with other traveling callers coming into our area and moving the floor through things I didn't think they could go through. But by traveling myself, I'd also like to add that coming down that road, 114 nights ahead of it, I've done that same thing. I know where all the sticky spots are, where to inject this, this certain keyword uh, that pulls the floor through it. So you should really work it out at home before you just start trying it on, on an open dance floor. Yeah, I agree with what, uh, what Kim said, um, basically talking about uh, using the whole aspect of experimentals, um, the advanced list, the challenge list. A number of those calls can be used uh, and called to the mainstream dance um, to vary your program using the mainstream basics and calling the mainstream basics. Um, another area that, that you can use to vary your program, and, and also like Jerry says, it takes a lot of preparation, is, is getting into the getting into your pattern call. Um, for instance, if you're, if you're opening your pattern call, and Bobby Jerry will talk a little bit more about this later, if you always use the same way to get in, you circle left, you out on man left, come back and promenade, there's a number of ways that you can use to open your pattern call. And just by sitting down and and, and thinking about all the different ways, using, using DARS and Alamo styles, the, the many ways you can use the DARS and STARS, um, uh, uh, maybe a quick get in and then a quick right and left grand get out. There's a number of ways that you can achieve variety to your program just getting your dances started. The other way is getting them started from a squared set. I think Jerry's got a whole list of things. Um, when you always use a, a head square through or a head lead right or a... Um, head half square through or star through. If you're using the same type of get in and get out, um, your dancers are almost walking into that get in before you actually actually start calling them. The same way with a get out. If you're always doing a cross trail through to a left out of man, or you're doing a square dive through, square through three quarters round to a left out of man, um, this is one area that you can add a lot of variety. You can sit down and think, well, how many ways from a recognizable formation um, can I get my dancers quickly out into a left alaman or into a right and left grand. Um, these are usually short, memorized little blurbs, but um, sitting down with your checkers just for a little while and, uh, and finding all the ways from a 1-2-2-3 two, two, line you can get your dancers out or from a box 1-4 or whatever other, other names we use for those formations now. I'm not really sure. We're still, we're still finding new names, yes. Anyway, finding a formation that you can recognize from looking down at the floor at your dancers. Uh, you automatically recognize that uh, that one two two p line or that box one four, um, and using that right and left grand or using that that left alamand. Um, another way is to get them home without a left alamand or a right and left grand. To get them home to a squared set. It not only varies your program a little bit, but sometimes it'll it'll allow your dancers to uh, when they're through a figure and you can look down and say, "Are you home?" And they look there and they say, "Yeah, we're there." And this can add a little bit of variety to the program. So um, not only using the, the calls, using get ins and get outs is a good way. Andy? Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're noticing that uh, they're all talking about is checkers. Uh, I suppose a lot of you guys use checkers and or whatever. Uh, I'm a firm believer in diagramming. And I find that with diagramming, I can answer the phone and come back to where I was at and pick it up from that point. A lot of times when you're using diagramming to, to decide how or what you're going to call, uh, it has a problem because you're not sure right hands or left hands, so you'll maybe have to walk through it yourself. But one of the problems we as callers have, all this creative choreography presupposes one thing. To be a creative choreographer, you must have some ability to do some sight calling. Now, it's not necessary to you call all your dancers as sight calling, but to be creative, you must be able to do some. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself out on a limb. Uh, I'm going to take a little section of what I've prepared for this afternoon, designed primarily for the mainstream club callers. 
we get each quarter, we get a quarterly selection that uh, we have called, we're going to call to our dancers. With that quarterly selection comes a group of things that we can do or how we can call it. They'll stay for whatever. I have a whole bunch of figures to get back to a left down man. And they work out fine. You have to read them or memorize them. And with reading or memorizing, uh, memorizing isn't nearly as bad as reading because if you memorize and go blank, you're totally blank. With reading, you forget to put a right and left through in or a star through or whatever, and you find out that you're looking one place and the dancers are looking another. So what I do, in my own limited ability, I figure that I should know what happens when when a figure comes out, a couple up, a whatever, track and trade. I should know what happens. So I'll sit down with my diagramming and I'll play with it until I can reduce it to the smallest common denominator so I don't have to remember much so that I can get you to a recognizable position that I know how to get you from there then call that thing and get you back to that point again so that I'm not lost. Uh, the dancers think we know it all, but we have to keep control all the time. I titled it, quote, Using the Quarterly Selections in the Mainstream Program and Reducing Them to Something We Callers Can Handle Easily. Okay, I'm going to give you a few and uh, we'll just see, see what happens. Okay, one of the problems we're having right now, and I understand at the, this morning's meeting, that maybe track and trade might be voted out of the quarterly collection. I'm not sure. But working on the track and trade program, I find in the mainstream program, if I set up the dancers in any other way than having two boys leading and two girls trailing in the column, the floor is not going to get 100% through. We'll get some through, but we won't get 100%. If we have the two boys leading in the column and the two girls trailing, we can get them through track and trade very easily because we'll have the boys, track two, girls extend and trade. We have no problem. So this is my theory on creation or whatever. Uh, if you want to, it'll be on tape, but if you want to, we can give you a few things here that will work, set you up pretty easily. And starting from a static square, if everybody rolls a half sash day, have the heads or sides, of course, pass through, separate, round one, squeeze in, make a line, do a curly cue. Now we've got the boys leading and the girls trailing. We call track and trade. At this point, all we have to do is a wheel and gear, and we're back to a box one four where we recognize. So that as callers, all we have to do is run a little piece of secrets and get them there. But now we, we can dance them from that position. If you're interested in calling a track and trade from a normal 1P, 2P line curly cue, uh, we have a, a quickie on that if you might be interested. Uh, pass through, we own, well, let me get back to where we're at here. Jump from one time. Uh, okay. Pass through, we own deal, everybody face your partner. Do a curly cue. Bend the line at that point. If you bend the line at that point, you're with your opposite in sequence. Very easy to get out. You can get it, use any kind of opposite get out. Uh, we can use a uh, Dixie Grand. There's a, always a good opposite get out. Uh, right and left to star through, uh, do a Dixie Grand, and you're right back there to a left down man. Okay. On, that's on the tracker tray. Maybe... A quickie with a release recycle, one that we've just gotten a hold of. I'm not sure what Car Lab has for a, a direction for dancing it. But here's another one that we can get from line spacing, one, like a 1P, 2P. Pass through with wheel and deal. Center, step to away. This part we can remember easily. Now we have no problem saying release recycle. So we call release recycle. At this point, after they finish, all we have to do is have the centers pass through and star through. They're going to be back in that 1P, 2P line or whatever line they started from. So you have no real problem with that. You can call it at any time from any line. And this happens to be one of the few 
that it really doesn't matter who you started with. A lot of our figures, if we have a had done a lady's chain somewhere in the line there, it don't work out so good. But this is one of the few you always will end up with the person that you started with, starting with that setup. That's, that works out pretty good. Uh, let me hit on ping pong circuit and then flip the mic around a little bit here. Uh, one of the things we like it, and I'm sure everybody else does here, because a lot of the dancers in our area, when we'll say ping pong circuit, they'll join in, one will say ping, and then you hear the rest of them say pong, you know, so they'll laugh and giggle like with the track two to go woo woo. So that creates a lot of fun for the dancer too. But again, setting it back into your uh, uh, one P two P. Did you know that uh, if you pass it with a wheel and deal, step two away, and from there on, you do a ping pong circulate. You can do it once, you can do it twice, you can do it as many times as you want. You always end up back in that quarter tag setup and use that old get out, swing through, turn through, do a left element. So it really doesn't matter how many times you call it. You can always end up with the same basic choreography. You'll have, you will have rotated your squares around a little bit, so you have not hurt yourself. The Dixie Derby we love because, oh, that, that scares you right and left through. We love to call something we never really get, can't get in trouble with the Dixie Derby. Uh, let's see, we have one more here. We have a ping pong circulate set up from an eight chain through. Okay, from an eight chain through, if you have them pass to the center, center step to a wave, do a ping pong circulate. After you finish, if you have them extend, all they've done. For all your practical purpose, all they've done from their original setup was step to an ocean wave. So if you had them in a box one four, and you had them pass to the center, center step to a wave, do a ping pong circulate after they finish the ping pong. You have them extend all you've had them done from the box one four step to an ocean wave, and you can go on there with your choreography. So uh, with that, let me turn it over to Mr. Kerr. I think uh, Andy is bringing out a point here that I don't want to go by. Uh, when you're working especially with something new, or when you're working with creative choreography, it kind of goes along with what we said before. If you're doing the unusual, get in and get out just as fast as you can. He, he is bringing you back, for instance, on that ping pong circulate, if you're starting in a box one four type setup, and you use that ping pong circulate, figure that he gave you, he brings you right back to the box one four. That's a perfect get out because the corner is close at hand. You haven't wasted any time after you've accomplished what you set out to accomplish. You got the dancers to do something. You, you had a goal in mind, the ping pong circulate that you were teaching and you brought them back to the corner. Don't let that point go by. Get in, do it, and get out just as fast as you can to the corner or to a partner. Those are the only two recognizable ladies in a square for a gent. You guys should know that. Only two gals in a square does the guy really recognize his partner in his corner. So work your choreography around them, especially if it's a little unusual. I'd like to give you some ideas that I wrote down for, let's say, unusual choreography. I'm going to start with perhaps the obvious, but it's something that I do every time I do a caller's clinic. I say, how do we start? After the initial circle left from the Alamanzar breaks or the Alamo styles or whatever, how does most every caller start every sequence, every dancing sequence from the squared set? He says probably one of two things. Heads square through or the heads lead to the right and circle to a line. Those things pop up time after time after time. Without realizing what kind of answer I would get or what, or what kind of response I would get, I sat down and did this at a caller's clinic one time, and sure enough, about 95% of the replies came back with those two things. So for me, the most basic place to start with unique choreography is from the squared set. Instead of saying those two things, I eliminate them and say, how many other things could I start from a squared set? And if you sit down and make a count of them, there's at least 30 on the mainstream list alone that are perfectly legal calls within the knowledge of the mainstream dancer that you can start from a squared set. Why do callers always use square through and lead to the right? Because they've gotten into that habit. 
Again, we come back to the fact, get out of the habits that you're in. Sit down and say, what do I always do, or what does everybody always do, and what else can be done? You can sit down and make the list just the same as I can. There are about 30 calls on the mainstream list that every dancer that's dancing mainstream should know. Um, it's, it's my experience now, when I go out and call, that dancers cannot do a spin the top. Many dancers are at least floored by a spin the top unless it follows a swing through. If you have the head square through and say spin the top, you're going to lose a lot of people on the floor. So one of my things is using that now in order to get the dancers to do it. And I found my little magic words to get them to do spin the top. Well, a long time ago when spin the top first came out, one of the nicest equivalents for lead to the right was head spin the top and do a turn through and circle up four to a line. And that's gone by the wayside somewhere. But if you sit down and, and say, well, from a static square, I can use spin the top. Now the next question is, what am I going to do after that? Well, by doing a simple turn through, you come out to circle to a line, something that you can use and now you're comfortable with, and yet the dancers have learned a little lesson at the same time. They've gotten some more proficiency. There are many calls on that mainstream list. Take a look at them and sit down and make your list, and by all means, have that list in front of you when you start to call. If you sit down and make the list and leave it at home, it's not going to do you any good. I've made the list, but when I get to the dance, I can't remember them. I don't remember all those 30 things, so I take the list along and sit it there on the table in front of me. And even if I only glance over, I might see a square through three quarters one time, and I might see cross trail through up the outside around two the next time, and I might see spin the top and turn through the next time, just even just glancing casually down. The same thing, by the way, applies to the quarterly selection and the plus one and the plus two list. If you look at those calls, by adding either a half sachet or a past the ocean, you can do almost all of the quarterly selections, the plus one and the plus two list, from essentially a static square. So the place perhaps to start your variety is right from the opening sequence out of a static square. The next thing that I like to do is sit down and say, well, let's suppose the caller falls into the habit of saying head square through, or even heads lead to the right. What is the next call? 99 times out of 100. What are the next two calls? 98 times out of 100. It's either a, well, let's say 97. It's a do -sa do or it's a swing through, or it's a right and left through. And sure enough, when I ask that at a, at a caller's clinic, those are the answers that I get. So I sit down and I say, what else can we do, guys? And off of the mainstream list, there are 18 other calls that you can do that should be within the realm of the knowledge, right from the easy right-hand stars and the split two around one to a line of four uh, to, the, uh, to another square through or a turn through or an eight chain through. We're talking only mainstream. If you add step to an ocean wave, you suddenly come up with about another dozen that cannot be done from facing couples, but can be done from an ocean wave. So you're talking about, about 30 calls that can be done after a head square through instead of those three, right and left through, swing through, and dose do So start your variety there. Go from the simple and, and work up from there. I'd like to, if I can, I sit down and maybe this will stimulate some ideas on your own. That's what we'd like to do this afternoon. If we could get a square here, I'm going to give you some things that, that uh, perhaps you haven't thought of. If we could get just a square of people to come up and dance for us. Give you a chance to stretch. I'm not going to give you tests, and I'm not going to embarrass you, and we're not going to do dancing sequences. I'm going to give you ideas not dancing sequences. I'm going to give you ideas. And no skirt work. Yeah. <laughs> I asked them to turn the air conditioning off, but I don't think they have. Now again, let me repeat, I'm only giving you ideas. These are things that I use or things that I see, and again, they're not things that I would dump on a club in one fell swoop. These are things that are to be taken a teaspoonful at a time. Let's have the heads pair off and, and uh, a uh, step to a left hand wave, if you will, please. All right, now most of us probably have, have fallen into using boys cross run and the ladies trade. That, as a matter of fact, is an A2 basic called mix. 
we, uh, what, going along with what Kenny said a while ago, many times if you know some level above what you're calling, it's very possible that you can call those things directionally without ever mentioning the name. Dancers will do boys cross run and the ladies trade without ever knowing that it's a mix and you haven't stepped off the list. Nobody can accuse you of that. Many of the advanced calls, many of the challenge calls are made up of basics that come from lower levels. They're simply combinations of things. It kind of behooves you a little bit maybe to study some of the advanced level calls, not with the thought of calling them, but with the thought of maybe being able to call them directionally or use them directionally in your calling. All right, so as I say, everybody's used to having the boys cross run and the ladies trade. Well, I sat down and I said, well, if they're used to doing that, what else could we possibly do? So I say, boys cross run to the far end. By the way, this is my magic word. I mentioned magic words a while ago. Later on, I, I get into the evening and I have the ladies cross run, and obviously that's not done very much. But remember when, when we used to say, when this was tough, having the boys cross run, many callers were saying, boys cross run to the far end while the ladies trade. And they kind of eliminated that, that little magic word, that little magic phrase now, because the dancers are so used to doing it. But if I want to go back and get the ladies to cross run, I realize that it's just as hard now for the ladies to do that cross run as it was a year or two years ago for the boys to see it. So I go back and pick up the magic word, and then I have no failures. For instance, going back here for a minute, instead of this, do this with me, if you will, please. Boys cross run to the far end, and the boys circulate twice, boys. Be sure to go twice while the girls do a U-turn back, and everybody bend the line. Now, it's not a big deal. I could have easily had them wheel and deal, or Ferris wheel, or bend the line, or couples circulate. It's not a big deal. That's not, I'm not trying to impress you with a big deal. I'm saying it's variety. It's something that was not done before. If uh, uh, many years ago we used, to, we used to form a two-faced line by doing right and left through and a quarter more, and I dare say if we call that now, we'd probably get something else. I, I've had people do a roll on me. I've had them roll away half sachet. I've had almost everything except a quarter more. So I, I looked for the phrase where I couldn't miss, and I came up with this. Do a right and left through. Boys, courtesy turner, an extra quarter. Ladies, touch hands, and the ladies trade. And I don't lose a single person on the floor. But I don't give them a chance to miss. I've found the phrase, and I say it faster than they dance. Let's have the couple circulate. Ladies, cross run to the far end, ladies, and the ladies circulate twice. Go, girls. I could have the boys trade, but let's have the boys do a U-turn back and swing through with the one coming to you. I'm a late with the call, but they would have done it. Let's have the ladies run around a man. Uh, let me have the uh, boys cross run to the far end, boys, and the boys circulate. Girls do a U-turn back, and everybody swing through. It's not a big deal, but it's different. It's something the dancers are not used to doing. If I want to... If I could say, now it's perfectly legal to have the centers cross run from here. As a matter of fact, I found out from experience that this is tough. I don't know why. It shouldn't be any tougher than the other way, but maybe it's tough because the dancers are not used to it. So I have, I have them set up like this. Boys run, bend the line, do a right and left through, and send the Lady Dixie style to an ocean wave. Boys trade, and the boys run. Couples circulate. Check it out, girls. Ladies, cross run to the far end, grab a man, and bend the line. All right, now, why did I have the ladies do it first? Because the ending result was a normal line, and dancers are comfortable with that. If I had had the boys cross run, I could have easily had the boys in the middle of that left-hand situation and have them cross run first, but that would have left me in a half sachet line, and dancers are not as comfortable with that kind of line. So I, I think from the, the simplest point of reference that I can, I say I wanted to get in and do it and get out fast. The most important thing is to get out to a recognizable situation. So knowing that, I have the ladies do the cross run first because after the bend the line, they're normal again. I'm, I'm not giving you sequences, please. I'm giving you ideas. Please keep that in mind. Uh, let me go on. Let's have... Uh, do this for me. Pass through and wheel and deal. Now this is something that is not mine. I wish it was. I have never seen this anywhere. I'll tell you now I stole it from News and Notes and it was Al Brendis who's right up in News and Notes a couple of months ago. I think this is marvelous. Let's have the outside couples roll away. 
by now, we would not have started from here. What what we would have started with is something like the heads roll, uh, the heads uh, square through while the sides roll away. All right, let's have the centers pass through. So we end up with a setup like this. Okay, stay with me. Now we know that when you do an eight chain through, if we do an eight chain through from here, it'd probably be a disaster. But Al's idea was, and he claims this was used years ago. If we do only an eight chain two, the people on the outside never even have to realize that they're half sashayed. All they're doing is pulling hands by. All right, now let's back up for a minute. If I know that my dancers are going to question coming out to this kind of setup, what is probably going to be my ending for this thing? Well, I'm going to be looking uh, either for a dose to dose, something simple, depending on how simple I have to get. What I'd like to come out to is a swing through. Well, now, if I know my dancers will question the swing through from this, if you're talking to some mainstream dancers, they'll get excited when they come out to this kind of thing and you say swing through. Well, you can say step through an ocean wave, but you can also do this. You can, you can prep them for the call. If you uh, side couples would, please, just back out for a minute. Just back out to, to home from where you are. Just back out, okay? You can prep them for the call, for the sequence. I know the ending thing that I want to get to is that eight chain figure, okay? So I'll say something like this. Side couple square through four. Go ahead. I've already had the others roll away, but I would say heads, the others roll away. Step to a wave and do a swing through. And the boys run, and they got a line of four. Go back to the idea. Get in, do it, and get out fast. Get to a recognizable situation, okay? So I have primed them for what I know will be the goal. It may be not the goal for the end of this tip. It may not come till late in the night, depending on how far I have to build up. But I'm going to start simple. I started them in a half sachet setup. If they were shaky at all about meeting that same sex and doing the swing through, I'll do that a few times until they're comfortable. But always at the end of the swing through, which is the goal right then, have the boys run and get back to a recognizable situation. Do it and get out fast. Let's pass through and wheel and deal. Center two, do a right and left through, roll away, and zoom. Get out of there. The other two, pass through. All right, now, again, I've got the setup that I want, regardless of how I got there. Now I'm ready for my eight chain two business. Let's do an eight chain two. Meet the outside pair and do a swing through. All do a scoot back and the boys run. Now, I think that's beautiful. An eight chain two, and the outside couples never know that they're half sachet. That's a mainstream base, and boy, it's not a big thing, but we're not looking for big things. We're looking for variety. Remember what we said at the very beginning of the session. We're not looking for challenge. We're looking for variety, something different that the dancers cannot possibly lose. They must not lose the game. Let's have you pass through and wheel and deal. Uh, bear with me, friend. Here's an old one we used to do years ago. I, I don't know who the heads are, and I don't know who the sides are. I'm going to say the heads are now in the middle, okay? Let's have the heads in the middle pass through. We used to say this, everybody square through, go. Heads go four, sides go three. Heads, you're in the middle, go that fourth hand right beside yourself. And yeah, they don't know who the heads and who the sides are, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. Square your sets back to home. Let me start you out. I'm rushing. I'm rushing, and I'm going to lose you on it. Okay? Let's have the head square through four hands. Sides roll away. I, I'm sorry, sides. Don't do that. Sides, don't do that. Pardon me. Everybody square through. Heads go four. Sides go three. It's been forgotten, but it's a mainstream basic. What are we going to do? Do a U-turn back, everybody, and I got a perfect square. It's no big deal, but it's variety. It's something that you can work with. Well, I've still got a square facing in that I can work with. At least the dancers are comfortable now. They're not all upset. Let's have the heads do a star through and spread, and the, everybody pass through, wheel and deal, and spread. Pass through, wheel and deal. 
do a double pass through, and the ladies do a partner trade, taking it one step further. Now, this is going very fast. I would never go this fast at a, at a club dance. Maybe you could make a whole night out of just that one setup. But here, you can add to it now. When you feel they're comfortable with it, now you have the same sex as do it, and it looks different entirely. The key to the thing is always the inside people go the extra hand. So you say, everybody square through. Boys go four, girls go three. Count them, girls. Boys, you got another one. All right, now, if you want it, you turn back. You can get out of it. If you want to change the get out, that's easy enough, too. Just the boys. When you finish, boys, boys do a clover leaf. Come around, look at a girl right in the eye, and touch a quarter. And the boys run, and bend the line, and I'm back to facing lines. There are other get-outs. I could have said, boys, meet her and star through. And from there, I could have promenaded. I could have California twirled and bent the line, and I'm back in facing lines. Sit down and work on it. Think about what can I do, what does everybody else do, and what else can I do? Here's one of my favorites. Have it, everybody slide through and touch a quarter, walk and dodge. What does everybody else do? Partner trade. What else can you do? Well, there's nothing wrong with the body flow if I say boys, now, and I would never start here, but I, could, I would say boys fold. I would have prepped them first for a fold. Okay, go ahead boys, fold. All right, now, how would I have prepped them? I would have prepped them by this, because uh, to my mind, the mainstream dancers, and dancers in general, are weak on folds. So I start out so that they can't possibly miss, okay? For instance, uh, boys unfold, if you will. Why do I say they can possibly miss? Because the guy in the center has a choice of two, okay? It sounds ridiculous to us callers, but it's not ridiculous to the dancer. If he is unfamiliar with the call fold, he has a choice of folding to the right or folding to the left. And I don't want to take the chance that he's going to miss. So I set him up so that, I, so that he can't miss. Or I set the girl up. I could easily fold the girls. But the center girl has a choice of two. So I prep them by setting them up so they can't miss. And I do it like this. Everybody bend your line. Pass the ocean. Swing through. Boys run. Tag the line. Turn into the middle pass through ladies fold and look at his chest girls okay I get a laugh out of it but I get everybody to do it and not a not a person misses there's no way they can miss that because neither girl has a choice of two there's only one choice and she can't miss okay star through if you will please bend the line and pass the ocean I know what you're thinking ladies trade and the ladies run tag the line turn into the middle, pass through, boys fold and look at her nose, or her eyes, okay, notice that neither boy can miss, there's only one target, okay, do this for me, everybody uh, just step to an ocean wave right where you are, when I've got them to fold to face, you and I know that they can easily fold to face in back of somebody, and I want to cover that possibility, I'll make a whole tip out of fold and have a ball with it. Okay? But I look, I look for a key word, and I have to admit I stole this from our friend Lazary. I thought it was one of the cutest things I've ever seen. Girls fold behind is behind, girls, and do a double pass through. Okay, so I get a laugh. It's no big deal. But I get a laugh, and they can't miss. And that's what we're looking for. They can't miss. We maybe get a laugh, and that's a bonus. Okay? All right, now what did I say before? All right, I've got them prepped. Now let's have the boys do a U-turn back. And everybody star through. Well, we wouldn't do this for body flow, but bend the line. Pass through. All right, now that they more or less understand fold, I can go on and build on it. Now they, some of them have a choice of two, but I've prepped them as well as I can. So this is the next fold in the progression. After you've done the easy ones, now I can say boys or ladies fold and expect them not to miss. Let me have uh, the boys fold, if you will, please and everybody step to an ocean wave. Now, if you work with diamonds, here's a beautiful one. Have, let me have a scoot back, if you will. Boys fold and roll, boys. And chances are they'll probably do that. Now, now how am I going to get out of that mess? Girls, touch a quarter. Check your ocean wave. Let me have everybody with the left hand hinge. 
girls fold behind the boy and roll girls. How do I get out of it? Boys touch a quarter. Check a two-faced line. I know what you're thinking, Fred. I know what you're thinking. I use touch a quarter. So we have a two-faced line, and I can work with that. Let's have the ladies fold in front of the man. I know what you're thinking. Stars are. Let me see if I can come up with a more. Um, here's one that we used to do. Everybody passed the ocean. Remember what I said to you all ago about cast-off three-quarters? I, it's my feeling that a cast-off three-quarters from an ocean wave is a forgotten basic these days. It's not used, but it's part of our mainstream program. Now, uh, there's been some controversy about the term cast-off. If you don't like that, it's just as easy to say, with the right hand, cast three-quarters. <laughs> and I'll get around you that way. But if I do it from here, I run a severe chance of losing somebody on the square. Because I know from my caller's knowledge that the people that are now facing out are going to wind up in the center of a wave. Whenever you cast off from the center of a wave, I know that the people that are now facing out wind up in the center of it. So who's going to wind up in the center? It's going to be a boy and a girl. And that's taking a chance. Right? So rather than start, if I feel like I want to work cast off from a wave and I feel like some might be unfamiliar with it, I start like this. Let's have everybody hymns. And I would do something to break the body flow. I would never cast off three quarters after a hinge. All right, so let's have a split circulate. And I know the boys are facing out, so right away I know that the boys are going to wind up in the middle. Everybody with a right hand cast three quarters. Boys hook with the left, and the boys fade. And the boys run and bend the line. I accomplished what I set out to do, and I immediately got them back into a recognizable situation. But I had that magic phrase in there they couldn't possibly miss. It's the same way with the ladies when you cast off three quarters. You guys have something to add? If somebody from the floor has something to add, please jump in. We had to hope this would be a trading back and forth. <laughs> I don't want to dominate. I don't, I don't need to call anything, but uh, that was a very good work, Jerry. Very well done. Uh, one of the things that... Uh, uh, that uh, I think you should be careful of, and Jerry mentioned this also, don't overdo it. Uh, if you're going to get very creative and uh, do some, really it's a uh, w weird, uh, weird positioning is what it is, and, and uh, I found that by setting it ahead of time and using it uh, several nights in a row, I go out and I find a group that I can really call it very directional and push him through a few weird things and uh, you know you can always maybe push him through it but you can't make him like it and I've called that dance push him through it and I really impressed myself and that's the thing you don't want to do you don't want to overdo it you got to be very careful because you can sometimes push him through it and and they won't like it so be very careful and go easy with it I don't have anything that I can really add to uh, uh, my, of course, well, head, everybody star through. We're, what I spoke of a while ago, veer to the left and make a two-faced line was using the more advanced figures with, uh, uh, in keeping, you don't get too far away from the handhold. For instance, from here, girls do a walk and dodge. All right, now, you can uh, easily see here that if you have one end do a wheel and deal and the other end do a recycle, you're going to have this couple facing. Now, if you've got a little group that doesn't do a lot of different position dancing, then I would get out of it like that. But if you go calling AC deuces or circulates and things like that, you're going to get into trouble. So getting in and getting out is very important. One end do a wheel and deal if you can, the other end recycle and face that pair. The key word is face and the pair, really. Um, there's a lot of little things you can pick up off your uh, your list. Uh, do a right line through, beer to the left, girl's hinge. We're not using diamonds. But you got an ocean wave, center girls trade. All the girls swing through, boys face in. Swing through, honey, left hand a minute, there you go. Very good. Okay, you can you can see, you can have the girls step through and make a wave with the boys. Well, don't, don't, don't do it, but don't do that. Okay, for now, or other ways out. Girls uh, swing through again. Girls do a turn through. Boys reach in and courtesy turn this girl right back to normal lines of four. Different things. Uh, uh, star through, uh, star through again, veer to the left, couple pins. We can use triple trade, center boys trade and all the girls trade. Same thing, we don't have to say couple pins, okay? 
Okay, uh, could I get you back to your normal uh, square set just for a moment? Square them up, yeah. Re, re, repair, repair the call, repair the caller's mistake. Uh, okay, if uh, if you're getting cold, we'll just hold you one more minute, huh? I wanted to show you uh, a little thing here with the uh, track or trade again, uh, only using it from a the setup that most of the mainstream dancers have trouble with. Have the heads uh, uh, ooze over to the right mega line if you would. Uh, that's a good call, isn't it, huh? Okay, yeah, they, they did it, didn't they? Okay, now, that, that, that is the key word. Do a curly cue. Now, normally, in, in our area, if I would call track and trade from here, I would have a problem. I really would. Uh, I can use any kind of keywords that I've thought of. It doesn't work. But if they can do a track and trade from this setup, if they can, and you want to get them in and get them out of there as quick as you can, do a track and trade. See if you, you all going to be all right. And I like this one because I think it's a real cutie. If you got pretty good dancers, you can get away. From here, do a Ferris wheel and spread. And all you've done was a right and left through equivalent. You're right back to where you were before, only did a right and left through. So that makes a real nice little bit of dancing for maybe your better dancers and uh, it kept you out of trouble. You're right back where you want to be. Here. I think knowing certain modules uh, really opens up some doors. Would you guys like to take a rest or do you want to? No, you're doing okay. Getting cold? Or we're staying warm here, they're moving around. Um, knowing a few modules really can add a lot of variety to your program. Um, we've been using this expanded positioning up to now and we've been directionalizing a lot of different calls. Let's look at another way of adding variety to your program. As many of you have danced with somebody who uses lines of three or who uses different formations and using mainstream basics is a more or less a gimmick type of a choreography, but let's say we had uh, these lines cut to quarter, okay? Let's say you do a single circulate once in one half, all right? Center boys, and we say center boys so they can identify real quick. Center boys trade and spread. And now we've got them doing something a little different, okay? We've broken the flow. Now, what Jerry's using so far and, and, uh, and what Tim has been using and uh, Andy's been using, we've had a flow. Here's another way of adding variety. I think we can get a little bit of excessive with this, but it still is a way of adding variety to your program. Girls cast right three-quarters round, all right? Center girls cast left three-quarters round. And once again, you picture the center girls cast left. Outsides bend in. Boom, they're in, into a formation that they recognize it's quick. Now let's, we've directionalized them. We've had them stop and check their positioning a number of times. Let's get them out and say, send the tag and, and get them moving into a swing through. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Boys run. Get them flowing in there. Bend the line. In other words, we've got back to lines before, but, but use it. Use it quick. Get out of it quick and then uh, and, and get away from it and, and get them flowing again. Um, Another such example might, uh, well, let's do a pass through and a wheel and deal, all right? Um, centers roll a half sachet. Centers pass through and separate, go around just one. I wouldn't necessarily split two, go around one, make a line. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call it in this order, but we're trying to get into this kind of a setup, a boy, boy, girl, girl line. You might have them touch a quarter, okay? Centers only do a walk and dodge. Those who can, if you're looking at her, star through. If you didn't, face in, check lines of four. Same sex as touch a quarter. Single circulate one position. All the boys run, and we're finding ourselves in, in a familiar position. So it's a quick boom, get into it. Talk a little bit, boom, get out of it real quick. Once again, I think you can overdo this type of uh, choreography if you've got your dancers always standing and checking their positions um, and not balancing your flow. You can do this a little bit over over bit. Um, centers do a partner trade. Star through and you're back to lines. So once again, there's, there's a number of different ways to add variety to your program, not only using standard positioning, but using some different gimmick positioning. Um, most of these are memorized type things um, or modules. Will, may you, uh, but uh, they, they add a little variety to the program. The basic thing is to keep the balance of flow. Um, use a little bit of directionalizing, but keep them moving. Um, don't overdo it. Okay. 
I saw two while we were here. Incidentally, when he had that little business with the girls cast off three quarters, some of you may have recognized the galaxy formation, a C1 formation. That's why uh, when we said a while ago, if you know something about the higher levels, it's amazing what you can bring down. If you're just aware of them, you don't have to call them. Just be aware of them. Maybe do a little study it. Try this one. Pass through. Wheel and deal. How does everybody set up a column? It's always out of line spacing and some kind of a curly cue. How about this? Double pass through and all the girls do a U-turn back. You got a nice track and trade type column. Let's have all the uh, uh, girls do a U-turn back again, please. Lead pair do a partner trade. Everybody slide through. Everybody star through and all the girls do a U-turn back. Hopefully they'll do it in body flow direction. And you got a column. If you want a left-hand column, now you don't work with left-hand columns very much, do you? Maybe it's because you know you know how to get into them. I have I have trouble getting into left-hand columns. It's a big deal for me. But you can use that kind of a setup to do it. That's all. And all the girls do a U-turn back again. Instead of having the girls turn back, have the boys turn back after the star or two. And you have a left-hand column. If you want to work with that, it's no big deal to get out of a left-hand column. Let's have all eight circulate. And all the girls do a U-turn back. U-turn backs are wonderful. I mean, we're not looking for challenge. We're looking for variety. Everybody star through. California twirl. Everybody slide through. Everybody star through. Boys, I'm sorry, pass, pass through and bend the line. Excuse me. Uh, everybody far through and all the boys do a U-turn back. You got your left-hand column. All eight circulate. All the boys do a U-turn back. Centers pass through, go centers in and cast off three quarters. All you got to do is sit down and play with your checkered. The variety is there if you want it. I do the, we don't do very much. I, I sit down and I wrote some stuff from Vars and Alamos. Uh, you're getting deep here. You're getting into dancer formations that are not used very much. Here is, we use commonly at advanced level dancing a particular get out that I think is real nice. Everybody pass through, wheel and deal. And uh, let me have, uh, where have I got you here? Ladies pass through, please. And star through. Let's all just bend the line. Now, I want to get them into an Alamo ring, and I'm going to work with that. Let me do everybody do an Alaman left in the Alamo style in balance. And the boys run, and the boys fold, and touch the quarter. Touch the bar. Okay, now they won't turn it. The dancers won't turn it. You haven't told them to turn it. They won't do it. But I have a bar there that I can work with. Headmen, do you know who you are? This is the kind of thing that I'd have to set up pretty fast. Headmen, do you know who you are? Okay, let's have the head boys trade, and all the boys run around the girl. Bend the line. No big deal. How about this one? Alaman left in the Alamo style. All the boys run and the boys fold. Everybody touch a quarter. Head boys, do you know who you are? Head boys trade and the same heads do a swing through, right? Girls turn to the left. All the boys run around the girl, move up to a line of four. We use that in advanced level dancing quite a bit as a get out. And just knowing that, I bring it down into club level terms. But it, sit, it takes sitting down with your checkers and working with it for a little bit first. Let me have uh, everybody pass through, wheel and deal. Centers pass through and step to an ocean wave. Many times in advanced level dancing, we use circulates once and a half, which wind up in ours. And I can bring those down to, to basic level dancing. All eight circulate once and a half. Check it out, guys. Boys run around a girl, take her in promenade. That's my intro. I haven't done anything hard. Everybody back out to a circle. Do a, uh, I'm sorry, no, yeah, head, heads go forward, headmen take the girl you got going on. Head men take the girl you got, step in and pair off. Step to a wave and swing through. Now, depending on the knowledge of my dancers, I might have to prep this. I'm going to say all eight circulate once and a half. If you think they can't do that, it's pointless to try to go in. If you, can't, if you think they can't circulate once, 
it's pointless to try to do the once and a half into a bar from here, okay? So you might have to do a little prepping of your dancers before you get into this, okay? Now, what did I have them do before? I had the boys run and promenade. I've turned the situation around. Let's have all eight circulate once and a half. Boys run and bend the line. There's my easy get out, circle left. I've done variety, not challenge. Okay, head men and the girl you got step into the middle and pair off. Everybody touch a quarter. Here's where I'm ultimately leading to. Now you saw the boys run up to a line before. Here's what I'm ultimately leading to. And again, you might have to prep your dancers because if they can't do an all eight circulate from here, it's pointless to try to go once and a half. But it's going to be beautiful if they can. Let's have all eight circulate once and a half. Same sex as trade. And all the centers run. Bend your line, you got a circle of eight. And I've got four boys and four girls together, but that's all right. Mainstream dancers are used to that. They can work with that. And I'm circling eight. I haven't asked them to do anything big deal. Let's have uh, all the boys step forward and pair off. Step to a wave and the centers trade. Again, you might have to prep them, but if they can do the once and a half, it's beautiful at the end. All eight circulate once and a half. And all the boys run, move up to a line of four. They'll fudge around a little bit, but they'll get there. When you say line of four, they know line of four. You're looking for a get-out that comes to them fast, and they can't possibly miss it. Uh, I showed you the Alamo style in the, uh, the swing-through business. Yes. Anybody, do this for me. Have the heads pass, or everybody pass through, and I'm sorry, undo that. Undo that, undo that. Everybody touch a quarter, yes, it certainly is. <laughs> Let's do a triple seat. I'm setting you up for a position. Let me have all eight circulate. And the centers trade. And all eight circulate. This is one of my favorites for, for setting up a load the boat. I like to load the boats with the same sectors on the end. And you, did you see what I did? I had the centers trade, and, it, and another circulate sets up the same sections together from a normal column. It's not challenge, it's just variety. Let me show you again, all eight circulate. All the boys run around a girl, centers pass through, everybody slides through, and touch a quarter. All right, now I don't want to say centers trade from here because they just did a touch a quarter, so I break up the body flow from it. All eight circulate, centers trade, all eight, it could have been in circulate, if I want. It doesn't make any difference. Variety. All eight circulate. Same sex as trade and roll to face. I can have the boys load the boat, the girls do something else. That's just one of the things that I like to play with. But it was a different way of setting up the same sexes on the end. I used the same way for so very long, and I looked for another way to set it up. I said, what do I do? What else can I do? How else can I accomplish the same thing? Let me have the... Right. Let me have everybody touch a quarter. This is one that I think I got here last year. I'm not sure. Uh, at least if I didn't get it here, I expanded on the idea. In fact, I think last year they used walk and dodge for this. I'm going to say couple up, because lately couple up has been a big deal, right? So I said uh, last year they did this. Ladies do a walk and dodge. Go ahead, ladies. If you can, star three. The other girl goes centers in and cast him off three quarters. We have a line of four facing. Not challenge, but it's variety. Pass through, wheel and deal. And the center spread. Outside's in. Everybody pass through and do a U-turn back. So I took that home from Caller Lab last year, and when, when Couple Up came out as the quarterly selection, I used it for Couple Up. Touch a quarter, everybody. All eight circulate. Just the four girls in the middle. Girls, couple up. Now, you might have to do a little prepping before you get into this. You might have to have a, a ring of eight, boy, boy, girl, girl, and four girls go forward and touch a quarter and couple up. You might have to prep them into this, but this is the target at the end of the tip. This is the figure that I was looking to do at the end of the tip, and I had to prep like crazy to do it. I had to have do a couple up from all kinds of positions, but I finally got them to this. And I said, girls, square through three quarters. Go ahead, girls. 
If you're looking at a man far through, the other girl goes centers in and casts off three quarters. We have a line of four facing. I said, well, why not do it with the boys? Pass through, wheel and deal. Center spread, outside in, everybody touch a quarter. All eight circulate. Now, it could be boys walk and dodge. It could be boys couple up. It wouldn't make any difference. You'd get the same net effect. If you do the walk and dodge, you're there immediately. If you do the couple up, you've got to square through three quarters or pass through or something. Variety again. Let's have the boys do a walk and dodge. If you're looking at a girl star through, the other boy, now uh, I soon discovered that if I turned the situation around, suddenly it became hard. Well, what do I want to do? I don't want to leave that guy facing out. So I have him California twirl. So I say, if you can, star through and California twirl, the other boy goes centers in and cast her off three quarters. Now, unfortunately, this leaves me with this kind of line, which is still maybe a little bit shaky, but immediately, as Mike pointed out a while ago, everybody touch a quarter, all eight circulate, and all the boys run, and we're back into a recognizable situation. Accomplish the target and then get out fast. If, uh, here's one, if, if you feel like that is not challenge enough, I'll give you one that is, and it's a mainstream basic. Have the head, have uh, the center spread, if you will. Everybody touch a quarter. All eight circulate. Don't be nervous. Center pair do a walk and dodge. If you can, star through and California twirl, while the other four peel off to your left and bend your line. Now that doesn't look hard, but to mainstream dancers or even plus dancers, that peel-off makes them start thinking about peel-off. Peel-off is an underused basic, and that's one way I found to use it to make dancers think about it. It's variety in a mainstream program. It's not something you can throw out and expect instant success on, but the dancers can do it. They really can. Have everybody, uh, I'm trying to think here of what I can do, have everybody touch a quarter. The center four only couple up. I had another one, and I didn't write that one down. Centers pass through. Uh, here it is. If you can, touch a quarter. The other boy goes centers in and casts off three quarters. Now, I've got a three-in-one line. Now, if you're looking for some challenge, this is going to give it to you. How can I get out of it? Well, I usually like to play at the beginning of the evening. I have found some basics that help me get out of almost any setup. And one of them is if my dancers can do past the ocean from any setup, I can get out of practically anything. So one of the things I find out first early in the evening, if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of APD, is that can they pass the ocean? And if they can, that's fine. If they can't, there's another way around it. The easiest way here is to say don't do it. But if I'd have the boys pass the ocean, we'd be immediately into diamonds. Now, if I think they can't do that, that's fine with me. Have the boys step into the middle, boys step to a wave, boys, and spin the top. That's a mainstream basic. Can you find a diamond, everybody? Now, if they can, that's all right. If they can't, if the group doesn't know diamonds, that's all right, too. Boys, after you spin the top, Boys cast off three quarters with the right hand, pick up a girl, and the couple circulate. And whatever, bend the line, we're back into a line of four facing. Okay? It, it's much nicer if they can pass the ocean because the diamond is there so much faster. But the point that I wanted to make was that peel-off. When I got through with the center's in business and all that junk, I started doing the peel-off, and that sure adds a lot of challenge to it. Let's have everybody pass through wheel and deal. I've got the half past eight, haven't I? And spread. That's all right. Everybody pass through. Wheel and deal. Boys pass through. Step between the girls, boys. Now, if I stay centers in, I'm going to lose some. I found that out the hard way. So I don't risk the basic call centers in. I say, boys, step between the girls. Everybody cast off three quarters. Check an unusual line. Boys touch hands. Magic words all over the place. Don't give them the chance to miss. Right now, if they know load the boat, they may not know it from this position, okay? And I don't care. I don't take the chance of saying everybody load the boat. I prep them for it first. Girls on the end, the girls, load the boat. Go ahead, girls. Be sure you count three. There's one. Boys in the middle. Step to a wave, boys. 
and cling to. I'm just keeping them busy. Count three girls, don't cut it short. Boys extend and make a wave and the boys run. And I had to show them another magic word. I'm watching the girls. I know the boys can do the swing too. I'm not worried about them in the least. But I know there's going to be one girl out there who's going to cut it short. So I keep my eye on the girls every single minute. And the minute a girl starts to falter, I say, don't cut it short, girls. Count three, or you owe me one more, girls. Come on. I'm watching the girls because I know that's the way the mistake is going to be made. I could have, I, if you get that, you could have all eight load the boat. The boys could be working too, if, if that's what you want to work with. Boys could be loading the boat also. Um, anybody from the floor, does, it, does this give you any ideas? Please feel free to jump in. If you've got something to contribute, we'd love to have it. Everybody slide to. Step to a wave and do a single hymn. I, I, here's the sequence that I, that I used to, to build up here, and I still, you can make a tip out of this. What we said a while ago, what does everybody do after a walk and dodge? Well, they do a part of the trade. So I said, I said, what else can we do? And I came up with fold a while ago. So you can have the walkers trade. But that's a little sticky, and it, it makes such a nice building up sequence if you start like this. I would say something like this, just to get them moving, just to get them dancing. Don't clobber them right off the bat with what your, what your target is. Let's everybody do a speak back. Go, boys. Speak back. Go, girls. Girls, look down the wave, girls. Girls walk forward and trade with each other. Step into a line of four, girls. There's the magic word. I didn't give them a chance to miss it. I gave them the ending formation before they ever had a chance to falter. You've got to be fast with your call. Okay? Now, once they're doing that, watch this. Everybody, step, uh, everybody slide through and touch the quarter. Now again, I would I would proceed it with the seat back just to get them moving. Okay, seat back, go boys. Seat back, go girls. Girls look down the wave and the ladies fade. Girls reach across and start a flutter wheel. Right hand to each other, girls. Don't they? Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Fade down the line. Down the line. Oh, girls, I wish they hadn't done that to me. Make your line a four. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Every, uh, once more, he says. Okay. Actually, uh, what I, w I would never would have called uh, a variation in the sequence that fast, especially at a dance. Okay. I would have had that lady do those trades three or four times to get them comfortable with, because what I'm coming on to is going to throw them a curve. They'll do it, but it's going to throw them a curve. Everybody slides through, touch the quarter. Girls, look down the wave, ladies. Ladies trade with each other, step forward into a line of four. Trade down the way it goes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay? Everybody slide through. I've done it three or four times. Everybody touch a quarter. Ladies look down the way. Ladies walk forward and trade. Girls reach across and start a flutter wheel. Right hand to each other. Don't forget to bring back a man, girls. See the one girl faltered. She almost left him. I knew that was going to happen because I've called it enough. And I didn't give her a chance. I gave her the magic word. Don't forget to bring back a man, girls. So when I get him doing that, then I twist it around and say, everybody slide through, touch the quarter, scoot back. Right, now, I would have, I'm sorry, I'm cutting, I'm cutting them short. Um, I would have done this. Let's have the boys run. I might as well give you the whole thing. we got time. Everybody do a right and left through, roll away, and the boys begin a flutter wheel. Right hand, boys, to each other. Go get a girl and bring her back with you. Box them out. I would do that. I'd do a right and left three. Pass three, bend the line. Do a right and left three. Everybody roll away. Boys begin a flutter wheel. Right hand to each other, guys. Go get a girl and bring her back to you. I would do that three or four times. My target is this. Everybody box it out. Slide two. Touch the quarter. Scoot back. Step number two. Boys look down the way. Boys trade, walk forward, pass right shoulders, and step into a line of four. And there's always going to be some guy who wants to pass left shoulders. That's why I put that in. I found out, just by trying it. Box for that. Still on step two. Slide two. Touch the quarter. Feet back. Boys, look down the wave. Boys trade, walk forward, pass right shoulders, step into a line, guys. 
everybody boxed and out. Obviously, I'm using the same sequence over here. I would not do that. I'd fire through and trade by or something or another. Okay, to change it. I'm aiming for something. Slide through. Touch the quarter. Sweep back. Boys, look down the wave. Boys trade, walk forward. Boys reach in, right hand, begin a flutter wheel. Right hand to each other and shift for the girl come back with you. I didn't leave a single person on the floor, and if there were dancers on the floor, I wouldn't leave a one either, because I built the sequence up. It went from the ladies' trade to the ladies' flutter wheel to after the trade to the boys' trade down the way to the boys. I had to get the boys doing a flutter wheel after right and left roll away. You've got to really prep them, because you're looking for the very unusual. Anybody? Neil Grayson from Los Angeles. Uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, the meet, you know, Mike talked about uh, setups and how to, you know, uh, doing things that we don't normally do. And Jerry's been working a lot with the meat of the figure. We can now also talk about variety in your ending get out. For example, have the head couples tear off and face the corner. Story three. And pass through and make a U-turn back. Now using just the mainstream basis, in your own little group of four, square three, two hands. Find your partner for a right and left hand. You don't have to bother doing it. But as you can see, as you can see, we can use just our mainstream basis. Uh, have the head couples lead to the right so they're going to line. Now, after, you know, getting them around, moving them around, and maneuvering to a 1, 2, 2, 2 line, center 4, square 3, 4 hands, as the ends with each other, Alamay and left, everybody find your partner for a right and left ground. So there's so many things that we can do just using easy mainstream basics. Okay? Thanks. I think in all of these instances, what, has, what we're trying to get across is in your preparation, anticipate those areas um, where your dancers may falter. And as Jerry said, try to direct them or see them to those particular areas. Now, the first or second or third time you call that sequence um, or something you've written, you may find additional areas where your dancers are tending to falter. Um, and, and learn from those areas and pick up additional cues. Try to find different... Uh, um, words that will help your dancers too. Um, the other thing is, is prepare your dancers, as Jerry was saying. Um, prepare them, uh, make a progression of your, of your figure. The other thing is to keep it short and to their final formation. Um, give them the words that will give them their final formation so they know where they're going to end up before they get there. And uh, one of the most important things about creative choreography is if you don't have dancer success, then you're not really, really that creative. So if, if you're trying for that dancer's success, um, pull it all together. Let me try one more. This, this was uh, Jerry was just uh, a while back talking on peel off, so uh, let's have the head easy to write again. Okay, uh, how about this? Do a curly kill. Now, when we teach our dancers about peel-off, we try to insist that it is an individual movement, not a couple, because often we'll be pass through wheel and deal, double pass through, peel-off, and everybody appears to think it's a, a couple. So if we get it like this, we'll have all the girls peel-off fully step up to a left-handed ocean wave. So you've created a little bit of different situation, and from there you go and do a left swing through, and so all the girls run around the guy. Bend the line. Okay, do a curly cue. All eight circulate one spot. Just the boys peel off. Girls step up to a left hand wave of the boys, girls. Good. All the girls uh, circulate one spot. Have the boys do a U-turn back. Bend your line. So you really haven't done a whole lot, but the dancers now understand you can peel off individually, and from there you can develop your peel off program. Yeah. Uh, 
these are, I have to sit down and work these out because somebody gave me these. And I'm sorry, I haven't got them worked out for you. Here's one that we used to use a long time ago. Have everybody pass the ocean where you are. And everybody hymns and the centers trade. Now this comes from years back. Uh, it was common practice to have somebody start a basic and the other people finish it. Now, I have not tried this with a mainstream floor. I fully intend to, but I'm going to have to experiment to find the best way. I think I know what it is, and it's not perhaps from here. But the basic idea is this. Boys, you begin a swing through, and everybody finish it where you can. So boys, begin half by the right. Turn that girl to the left if you can. Now, I'm going to have to look around for a key word, okay? That's something we used to do all the time, okay? Let's have the center's trade. We can expand the idea. Boys begin and everybody finish to spin the top. Boys turn half, turn left where you can free. The others move up, move up, move up. Okay? While I have you in this formation, there are other ways of setting that up. Um, let me have uh, all the boys in the middle. Boys, see your foursome. Boys, spin the top. All the centers run. All the centers. Girls, that includes you. Bend the line. Four boys step into the middle and pair off. Okay? I would have had them circle eight or something, depending on the complexity of what I want. But it's a common get out again at, at advanced level dancing. We set it up usually like this. I have some kind of setup with an eight chain setup. Everybody do a swing through. Now, I don't care which end the boys are on or which end the girls are on. The thing that I'm looking for is an ocean wave with the same sexes together, okay? And I say, everybody spin the top. Go ahead. Well, it's going to turn out, I know from calling this, that the boys are going to be in the middle. And I say, all the boys, check your ocean wave, boys. See it? All the boys spin the top. While the center girl run and bend your line, girls, to face in. There's another get out. Boys extend. Let's do another one. Have the centers trade. All do a spin the top. Four ladies check your foursome, girls. See it? All the girls spin the top. Thank you for joining us. We hope we gave you something. <laughs>